super curious. Have you ever tried or thought or considered any black hat tactics? Imagine a blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide, a case study where we peel back the curtains and show you what it takes to sell on Amazon. Welcome to the Million Dollar Case Study. It's said that patience is a virtue. It's important in life, but certainly in business too. I think as an entrepreneur, you have this interesting balance of needing to act quickly and get things done in the short term, but at the same time, be patient as you're growing over the long term. You are going to come across instances of things that are outside of your control. Maybe delays, waiting for your shipment to arrive, wanting your business to grow quicker, but be patient. Focus on taking small steps each and every day, knowing that over time, you're building an asset, a business that has the power to really change your life. All right, so I think today is gonna to be a fun day. Until this point, we've talked about finding your product, then getting it made, and then ultimately shipped into Amazon. Now, at this point, that process can take anywhere from sort of like one to two months, typically, by the time you get it manufactured, and then also the shipping time, depending on how you get it shipped in. And this is a really good time to get a number of things done. For instance, setting up your Seller Central account if you haven't already done so, but then ultimately creating your listing and taking product photos, okay? You've got this huge window of time. We're a big proponent of just doing one step at a time. So I normally wouldn't worry about all this stuff until this point where I'm just waiting around for my product to reach Amazon's warehouses. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna cover how to set up your Seller Central account, then how to create a listing and how it differs if you've got brand registry. And I'm also gonna show you how to update your listing using Jungle Scout and the keyword tools available there. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I definitely enjoy this process. So let's dive in. What is like one thing that we teach, other experts in the space teach that you perhaps don't agree with. Greg and I have always differed on this. Uh, I think Greg, I, I don't know if he's changed his stance on this, but you can just no. release <laughs> disparate products on Amazon that are you know, completely unrelated and still be successful today. I don't agree with that. Maybe if you have a lot of funds, you can, you can use that method. But I believe like once you have like a product that's successful, it often pays to build upon that one product and sell related products. Amazon always has these frequently bought together items. And so as long as you're selling things that are related, you know, you can sell more product because Amazon will find the relationships between the products that you sell. I think the amount of money that you can start with, there's always like a wide range that people tend to say, you know, I see some people say you need $5,000 to start or $10,000 or a thousand or whatever. You know, I've, I've launched successful private label products with as little as 500. Yeah, it, it doesn't scale as, as fast as you want it to, or as it should, you know, you obviously have to have a budget for um, advertising and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you if you could find a product that you could source for really cheap and get a small, you know, minimum uh, order quantity, then if it works, it works. You know, there's not a set amount that you should be starting with. To begin, we're gonna talk about setting up your Seller Central account. So simply, you can go to Google and just type sell on Amazon. Then one of the top listings here will be this one here, sell.amazon.com. Or you can type that straight into Amazon. The first thing to note is that there's two different types of plans, an individual plan and then a professional plan. There's a little bit of information about it right here. So for instance, with the individual plan, it's a free monthly subscription. There's no monthly costs, but you do pay 99 cents every time you sell an item. With the professional plan, 
Instead of paying per item, you pay $39.99 per month and you can sell unlimited items. So that's the main difference. The professional plan does also have access to PPC advertising and more advanced features. But to keep it really simple, if you're planning just to sell a few goods around the house, maybe some used items or under 40 units per month, then you might go with the individual plan to start out with. But if you're serious about turning this into a business, then you're planning to sell much more than 40 units per month. So it makes more sense to go with the professional plan and to get access to all the additional features. So one question that people often ask me is, can I start with an individual plan and then change to a professional plan? Yes, uh, I believe that you can. So while you're waiting around for a month or six weeks or however long, you could set up an individual account so that you can get in there and uh, you know save on that one month's sort of subscription while you're getting to know Seller Central. And then uh, you can upgrade when you're ready to the professional plan. So I'm gonna come up to sign up. The first thing it'll ask you to do is to create an Amazon account. Now you might already have a shopping account, but I'd actually recommend, even if you've got a shopping account, to instead create a new Amazon account and just kind of keep those two separate, okay? All right, here you put in your name, email, put in a password. They might ask you to verify your email address. So you should see an email like this, copy the code, paste it in. This is actually really helpful. It's making sure that your account is secure. Now it'll ask for your business location. So essentially you can either sell as an individual or you can sell as a business if you've got some kind of entity set up. If you've got an entity, you put in the country for that entity. So it might be the United States. That's the case for me or if not, then just enter in your country of residence, wherever it is that you're living. Remember that you can sell on Amazon from just about anywhere in the world. So you can definitely live in this Australia or many other countries, but still sell in the US, the UK, and all the different marketplaces. All right, again, if you've got a business entity, you just select what type or you select individual. The process for an individual is a little bit different to setting up as a business. So I'll see if I can show you a, a little bit of the difference here. So if I'm gonna go with an individual, keep in mind that you can start out as an individual as well, and then you can upgrade to a business later on. What's the difference between each of those? Uh, first up, I by no means am a professional, so I can't give legal advice, but uh, essentially, uh, an entity gives you more protection and it kind of separates your personal assets from your business assets. So essentially, if someone were to come down uh, and sue you for a faulty product or whatever the case may be, if you're set up under a entity, then they can only sue the entity. They can't sue you personally and claim your house and car and et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of like the main reason that people would use an entity is for that added level of protection, but you don't need to do that or certainly you don't need to do it straight away. So that's kind of up to you how you'd like to start out. I'm going to hit agree and continue. In this next step, you have to put in some personal details. So put in your country of citizenship, country of birth, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you had have chosen a business instead, then here you would need to enter in your company registration number. Following that, you then need to enter in your business address, whether you're an individual or a business. Keep in mind that you will need to be able to receive mail at this address because Amazon may send you a postcard in order to verify that address. We have heard of people having trouble at this step as they like might have used their company's registered agent's address, or some other address, and then not been able to actually receive the postcard and, and verify the address. Now, while I'm not an expert at this by any means, what we've heard works best is to use your own physical address regardless. And that way you'll always be able to receive mail and verify it if Amazon requires you to. Then after this, you'll need to enter in your phone number. Amazon will send you a PIN number, which you'll then verify. Once you're verified, then click next. 
Here, you now need to enter a credit card to charge your subscription to. What I'd recommend here is that if you've set yourself up as a business, then use a business credit card so that you keep all of your finances clean and organized. Also, if you're selling from outside the US and are needing a way to get a US dollar bank account, then I'd recommend services such as Payoneer or TransferWise. Both of these allow you to set up a US dollar bank account, which is typically hard to do if you don't live in the US, but these services allow it. It's a fully working bank account that you can receive your payments from Amazon, and then you can use them also to pay for product orders, and you can even get debit cards from each of these services, which you can then use for all of your business related expenses. The next step is then to create a store name. Like I mentioned back in episode seven, the store name really doesn't matter all too much. So you can just make it whatever you want and then you can always change it in the future if you wish. Do you have UPCs for all your products? Here I would say yes, as you will need these barcodes in order to create your listings and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Are you the manufacturer or brand owner? In our case, yes, we're private labeling products which means that we are the brand owner and the manufacturer. If you've already gotten a trademark for the brand that you want to use on your products, then you can choose yes here, as this is the start of the brand registry process. But if you haven't at this point, then that's totally fine. You don't need a trademark or brand registry to get started. You can add that in later on. You'll finally then end up at a review screen where you can double check all your information is correct and upload any necessary documents for verification. This might be different for you depending on what information you've entered along the way. Finally, you can then click submit and that's all there is to it. One quick note I'd like to add here is that Amazon has become more fussy when it comes to this verification stage. So if you were to get rejected the first time, I'd say don't be discouraged and try again. I have heard of a lot of people that are getting through in subsequent applications. So keep that in mind. Setting up your Seller Central account is a first great step. Following that, you'll likely want to create your first listing. So let's go through a demonstration. We're here in Seller Central. So there are a number of ways to go about it, but the easiest one is to go to catalog, add products. Now, Amazon asks you to type in a product name or UPC, etc. If you do that, you're actually gonna be finding an existing listing. If you're doing something like wholesale or retail arbitrage, then you need to find the existing listing for that particular product. But in our case, where we're private labeling a brand new product that doesn't already exist on Amazon, we're instead gonna come down to, I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Now we need to select a product category. We can just click through and choose the one that we like by diving into kind of the subcategories within. But what I like to do is to actually come down to search and search for a product type. So if I type in washable pee pads for dogs and search, I can see a few related options and I can see if any of these match what I'm after. So a pet bed mat could be a good one, but I might just try a different option. So I'm gonna type in dog pads, but I think the previous one was better. If I type in dog mats, I get a few more options here. I think feeding mats works for dogs. That's probably the best one. So I'm gonna select this category. Okay, we'll start with the basic information, our product name. Keep in mind, you can change this later. Next up for brand name, if you've enrolled within the brand registry program, this is where you enter in the brand name. And what Amazon is gonna do is it's gonna match this brand name against uh, the brand name that's been enrolled into brand registry. So if this particular brand name, so in our case, it's going to be Jungle Creations. So now Amazon is gonna check that I have Jungle Creations enrolled into brand registry. And if so, it will allow me to create this listing. If we scroll down, we've got manufacturer. This 
can basically be the same thing or really whatever you want. So I'm just gonna put jungle creations for unit count, I'm gonna put one, and then the count unit of measure is just gonna be the count, like one count, one pack. Now, you come up to the top and you'll see this product ID field, okay? And this is where it gives you the option to put in a GTIN or a UPC or EAN as they're most commonly known. This is where you need to have a uh, one of these barcodes in order to create your listing. You are able to apply for a GTIN exemption. Basically, this means that you don't need to have an EAN or UPC barcode. You don't need to pay for these in order to create a listing but that does require you to go through an application process. So usually the quickest thing is just to input a UPC or EAM barcode, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna select a UPC and then you input the number here. Now in order to purchase a UPC barcode, you need to go to gs1.org. You can come to get your barcodes, get your barcodes now and get a barcode from GS1 US. All right, if you come down here, you get to see their pricing. Now, until quite recently, you had to buy a whole number at once. So you would have to buy 10 uh, that would cost you $250, and then there'd be an annual renewal fee of $50. But quite recently, GS1 rolled out the option to get a single $30 UPC barcode, so now you have that option as well. So let's click on get a GTIN. If you've got a product that has different colors or shapes or sizes, then you will need to get a UPC barcode for each individual one. But it does allow you to get up to nine different GTINs this way. So you can buy these individual ones and what's really great is that they only cost $30 instead of $250 and there's no annual renewal fee. So this is a really great way to get started. So you can enter in your brand name, put in a description and purchase that one. Once you've purchased that one, you come up to My GS1. You want to go to the GS1 US Data Hub and this is where you're gonna find all of your UPC barcodes. So let me show you how to get your barcode. Let's come up to product and you'll see all the ones that are in use or in different statuses. I'm going to click on add new and then I need to put in a description. So I'm just gonna say dog pee pads 30 by 36 and then the brand name jungle creations Product industry, I'm gonna leave this at general unless it's one of the other ones. Packing level, they're packed per each, so I'm gonna leave that as is. Now, what you have to do here is you need to select a GTIN, but it doesn't allow you to choose an available one just yet. So what you have to do is first click save. Now you can automatically assign a GTIN that's available you'll see here that we've previously bought two packs of 10 and we've got uh, a lot of these available. We've only used two out of 10 and this one's used eight out of 10. So I'm just gonna select that and hit assign GTIN. You want to come down to the status, change that to in use. Once you change it from pre-market into in use, it permanently uh, attributes this GTIN to this particular product then what you wanna do is hit save. Once you've saved it, you want to copy this UPC barcode. So now we can paste in our UPC barcode into our listing. There's a few more details we need to fill out before we can create this listing. A lot of this information we can change later in the future, like the title, description, bullet points, and photos. But for now, we just wanna fill in the required fields in order to create this listing. Okay, so we've got everything we need to do on this page. We're gonna come over to variations. Now, if you have variations of your product, I recommend setting this up to begin with because it's a little trickier to add variations in later on. So these are the different options. You can have different color variations or different size variations. 
So if I click size, for example, I'm going to need to add in these different sizes. So in my case, it's 30 by 36 inches, 24 by 36 might be another size that I have. Once you've added in all of your variations, click add variations, scroll down and you'll see all of this information. Now you'll have to add in your UPC barcodes here instead of on that previous screen. Because again, you will need a individual barcode for each of your variations, okay? But if you're only doing one, then you don't need to enter it in here, you just enter it into that previous screen. You go through, the condition should be new, you can put in your price, let's say $29.99, there's gonna be one, $29.99, one. Add in your UPC barcode. Here the seller SKU is just a, a reference that you get within Seller Central. It's just an internal reference. It's handy to know what the seller SKU is for your individual product. So if you don't assign one yourself, then Amazon will generate one, which is usually just like a string of numbers and, and letters. So it's better to create one yourself. So it might be dog pads one, dog pads two, or whatever the case may be. This is just makes it a little bit easier for me to identify uh, each of these. I might make it dog pads 24 and dog pads 30, whatever the case may be, but it's good practice to create your own seller SKU, but if you don't, then that's fine too. Next, we're on the offer screen. So this is where you set your price. Again, you can change that later. If you haven't got variations, then you can enter in your seller SKU here. Let's come down to condition, it's gonna be new. And then here you can choose whether you want to use fulfilled by Amazon or you want to fulfill it yourself. Again, you can change this at any point, but in my case, and what I recommend for you is to use fulfilled by Amazon. All right, images you would upload here, but you don't need to do it at this stage. And then you can come over to description and you do just need to add in some kind of description, even if it's just the name of the product. So I'll put in washable pee pads for dogs. After this, we're gonna go into keyword research to help you identify the best keywords to use in your listing and then how to incorporate and build out a really professional looking listing. But for now, we just wanna generate and create the listing. So we're just trying to put in what we need to to get that created. After this step, you can now click save and finish and your listing will be created. How much of your business is on Amazon versus other digital products or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so Amazon before was kind of small, but just every single year it just keeps creeping up because Amazon gets more market share. So today I would say it's 25 or 30%. I'm super curious. Have you ever uh, tried or thought or considered any black hat tactics? Yeah, I don't do any black hat tactics, but sometimes I do some gray hat tactics uh, as long as I think it's pretty safe. So I use ManyChat a lot. Uh, Facebook Messenger, I'm sure a lot of your your followers are using this. Uh, rebates, I kind of consider gray hat. Same goes with like inserts. You can get a little bit creative with inserts and that sort of thing. But in general, uh, I always like to think long term. So I've been burned many times in the past with Google. I used to do some black hat stuff, you know, with websites and stuff. And eventually it will catch up to you. So I tend to not be in the black hat or even the gray hat camp in most cases. As we're all kind of like spreading content out there, we're always like, oh, I'll never do any black hat and so on. But I kind of just want to like have some candid conversations around like, you know, like real talk. Do, you know, have, have you considered or like thought about it? It'll catch up to you. Uh, you might not think it's going to happen, but I've just gone through this so many times in the past. I've been doing this for, you know, decades now. Probably not. No. Um, I honestly can't think of any off the top of my head. But no, I, I wouldn't and I definitely wouldn't recommend anything like that because, you know, if you get caught, you're done. You know, I wouldn't want to lose something that I've worked so hard for over the past couple years and, you know, built up. All right, so let's talk a little bit about keywords. 
Keywords are the lifeblood of your Amazon listing as this is how customers find your listing. They go to amazon.com, they type in whatever it is that they're looking for and then based off of those results, the images, the number of reviews, they pick the item that they'd like to buy. So you need to make sure that you're appearing on the most relevant keywords that customers are actually searching for. Now, how do you know what customers are searching for? Well, that's where Jungle Scout's Keyword Scout comes into play. This tells you the exact number of searches for different keywords. You may remember back in the product research section that Kerry and I used Keyword Scout a little bit in order to find ideas. So if you remember, I looked up the word dog at one point just to see what related keywords were out there that people were searching for. This is where I came up with things like dog mat and puppy pads, uh, which tended to be a little more competitive but as I looked at keywords that had slightly less search volume, so maybe not quite as competitive, that's how we finally stumbled across washable pee pads for dogs. Now, you might also remember that this is indeed a very competitive product. It's not the typical kind of product that we'd recommend you start out with if you're selling your first product, okay? You generally wanna find something that has less competition but what Kerry and I both liked about this is that we could see a lot of different types of keywords that people could search for and our product would kind of meet the needs of those different use cases. I'll show you what I mean here in Keyword Scout. So let's start out by typing in the name of the product, washable pee pads for dogs. All right, so we can see our search term up here. Keyword Scout tells us the exact 30 day search volume, which is over 8,000 searches per month. We can see the 30 day and 90 day trends. This is how much the search volume has changed over the last 30 days and 90 days. We can see the 30 day broad search volume. The difference here is that broad search volume includes keywords before, after, in the middle whereas the exact search volume is people that have searched for that phrase alone, okay? So an example of a broad search term might be blue washable pee pads for dogs. We can see the dominant category for that particular search term. You can also see recommended promotions. That refers to how many units we estimate you'd need to sell on a daily basis for about a couple of weeks in order to rank on the first page of results. So for me to rank on this particular keyword, I need to be selling about 23 units per day. And if I do that consistently, then I've got a good chance of ranking on page one for this term. Moving across, we can see the sponsored brands ad bid. This is referring to the sort of banner ad that you see at the top of many search pages. And this is how much I'd have to bid in order for my ad to display at the top of the page. Again, this is how much we'd estimate you need to bid in order for your sponsored ad to appear on this search term. Over on the right here, it tells us how easy it is to rank. This one is somewhat difficult. You can see other ones that are easier to rank on. You can keep scrolling across. Uh, you can see the number of organic products. So that's just how many results are returned on this particular page. I never worry about that one too much. And then also how many sponsored products appear under this search term, which personally I don't worry about too much either. When it comes to relevancy score, my initial search doesn't have a score as this score pertains to how relevant is this particular keyword to the original one that I searched for with a higher score, meaning that it's more relevant, okay? And if you come up to all columns, you can actually pick and choose the columns that you'd like to display. So what I want to achieve here is to create a list of relevant keywords for my product. The great thing is, is that Keyword Scout does most of the work for you. It's got all of the most closely related keywords here. So essentially my next step is to save all of these into a list. And you can store lists here in Jungle Scout. 
If I come over to the left, you'll see keyword lists, okay? In order to create a list from Keyword Scout, you can come up here, click this box to select all, then you can click the plus sign, you can add your keywords to an existing list, or you can create a new list. Now, just before I do that, one more step is to go through this list and deselect any keywords that don't seem relevant for your particular product. Dog pen, people that are searching for dog pens probably aren't wanting to buy the pads themselves. Whilst they might get that as kind of a, a secondary uh, item to go with it, uh, they aren't necessarily looking for my mat, so I'm gonna remove that one. Pee pads, dog pads are relevant. All right, I'm gonna remove puppy crate, whelping box. Again, dog pen indoor. Dog house breaking supplies is somewhat relevant, but a little broader, so I'm gonna leave that one out. Dog crate pad is good. I do like waterproof mat because that's what these are. But if I imagine people that are searching for waterproof mats, are they going to buy my product? Are they looking for one that's marketed towards dogs or are they just wanting a general waterproof mat? My mat can actually serve that purpose, but I don't know necessarily whether the customer is looking for my kind of mat. So I'm gonna leave that one in there at the moment, but I am a little unsure as to how relevant that particular keyword is. I'm gonna remove P. <laughs> Dog grass pad with tray. This isn't really a grass pad. Whelping pads. That's kind of another use case for this particular mat. It's not what I initially thought of, but people searching for that could buy our mat because it is uh, waterproof uh, and designed for dogs. So that could work. I'll leave that one in there. Dog potty training. I'm not sure exactly what people are after when they search for dog potty training, so, uh, but I will keep that one in there for now. All right, if I come down, we've got things like guinea pig cage liner. Now, of course, that's not at all what we intended this product to be for, but it certainly could be used for that. Now, I wouldn't use this particular keyword in my listing. That's gonna be very focused on our main uh, purpose, which is for serving dogs. Whereas it might be something that I would put into a PPC campaign and just monitor that keyword because potentially we might get a few sales from people searching for that and then purchasing our mat. So I'm not entirely sure. I know that one's not quite as relevant, but it would be, it would sort of go into a category of like test keywords to see how it performs. Pee pads for cats, that would sort of go into my sort of PPC experiment list and just see how it goes for a little while. But if I'm not getting any sales through it, then I would turn that particular keyword off. So keep in mind, there are two main reasons to create this keyword list. The first is to use them within your listing so that your listing has lots of relevant keywords and it helps it display for those particular keywords. The second reason is to advertise on these keywords so that you're paying to display on those particular pages, okay? So listing optimization and PPC advertising. If I take a quick look at the keywords that I've left here, as I mentioned earlier, Kerry and I really liked that there are lots of different uses for these particular mats. So our hoping is that we can start ranking on some of these lower search volume keywords that we see down here that are maybe less competitive keywords. And if we can get a few sales in a bunch of these less competitive keywords, hopefully that will help our product or, or make up enough sales for this product to be viable. Because of course, the most competitive keywords up the top here, things like puppy pads, etc., those are going to be really expensive and really hard to rank on, but perhaps we can rank on some of these lesser keywords, okay? So that was a kind of our thinking behind this and it's gonna be an experiment uh, to some degree, but I feel kind of confident that we'll be able to make some progress using this strategy. All right, so now I've gone through, deselected any keywords that aren't relevant. 
Next step is to come up to the plus sign. I'm gonna create a new list and call it washable pee pads for dogs. Create an ad. And that one's been created successfully. Just before we move on, I'm gonna show you one more example to demonstrate how and why you would use Keyword Scout. So this is a good one that I've used before. So let's type in swim mask. Let's say that you wanted to sell a swim mask. It always starts out with you typing in what you think the customer is searching for, okay? But what Keyword Scout gives you is the real data behind what people are actually searching for. So here, this one's always a great example. You can see that there are 1600 searches per month for swim mask. But if we look down, you'll see that things like swim goggles or snorkel mask actually getting uh, like over 10 times the amount of searches, okay? So if you were just to go in and call your product a swim mask, you might be missing out on a whole bunch of exposure on all these other keywords that people are actually searching for. Some other quick notes here on Keyword Scout. You can sort by any of these columns, ascending or descending. So you could see, for instance, what has the highest amount of search volume. You can also come up and filter this information, whether it be by search volume or categories or the product count on any of these search terms. You can save filter sets and then load those back up if you choose. You can also download this information into a CSV file as well. The next tool we have here is keyword lists. So this essentially just stores the lists of keywords that you create in Keyword Scout. So once you've saved your lists, this is where you come after the fact to access that list. So you can see the washable pee pads that I've already created here. Now comes the fun part where we actually do something with these keywords. So we're gonna move on to the next tool here, which is Listing Builder. Now, as the name sounds, this is gonna help us build out our listing to go on Amazon. So let's go through a demonstration. Let's come over to Create Listing. The options you have at the top are to draft a listing, so creating one from scratch. You can optimize an existing listing, which means that we can actually sync up with your Seller Central account and take all the information from your existing listing. We can then edit it, update it here in Jungle Scout, and then actually sync it back up and send it back to Seller Central all within Jungle Scout. And the third option here is to start with an ASIN for an existing product. So if you choose this one, you just type in your particular ASIN. But in this example, let's go to draft a listing. We're gonna do this completely from scratch. Now I'm gonna choose my keyword list. So I'm gonna scroll down to the one we just created, washable pee pads for dogs. You also have the option of creating a keyword list here, but again, we've already selected one. We have a few options here to process our keywords before we start building out the listing. The thing to keep in mind with your listing is that you don't need to repeat the same keywords over and over. So some of my top keywords could be small dog mat, medium dog mat, large dog mat. I don't need to repeat those keywords over and over. I can have dog mat in there once and then just put in the words small, medium, and large. So that's what this option here, remove duplicates, refers to. It's going to remove all the duplicates so I don't have to keep putting in the same keyword over and over. You've got the option to maintain phrases. So this means dog pads, pee pads for dogs. It will keep that as a phrase. If I don't check this, it's gonna split it up into the individual words. I like to maintain phrases, so I'm going to do that one. Now I'm gonna come down, process these keywords. You'll see that I've got a total of nearly 600 keywords. I can either copy them here, but instead I'm gonna to go to apply and next. And now we're into our content creator where we can build out our listing. The way that it works is that on the left side here, you've got words and phrases. So all of mine are currently phrases. And then within this section, it's divided into 
the keywords that you've used and have not used. Currently, I've got nothing in my use section, and these are all the ones that I am yet to use, okay? And you'll see that the search volume is next to each one. By default, it's sorted by the highest search volume first, because generally those are the ones that uh, you're gonna wanna be putting into your listing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting these phrases into our listing. And so if I start out with P pads, what you'll actually notice is that P pads disappeared from the phrases here. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll actually see that it appears in used phrases. So this is really handy to help us understand what we've used and not used. Okay, I'm gonna come back up to the top. I'm gonna continue, P pads for dogs. That phrase has disappeared. I've also ticked off both of them. Now, what else have we got here? Washable pee pads for dogs is another one. So I'm gonna add that in, which is great. Dog training pads is another one. So one thing I like to do is to use this little pipe symbol and then add in more phrases. So I could use training pads for dogs. And then you've got puppy training pads I might go for dogs, puppies, using that keyword. I might put in waterproof mat, potty pads. Let's see, dog crate pads is a, a, another one, pad or pads. So I'm gonna put that in there. You get the idea, you're starting to build out the title here. And you'll see as I come down that we've got all these used phrases. Alternatively, you could also have processed them as words, and then I could just be adding in these individual words. So you can do that as well. So let me go back a step and process the keywords as individual words, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go back to step three, this time I'm gonna uncheck maintain phrases, and we're going to process the keywords that way. So now we've got a total of 69 different words. So we're gonna go apply and next, and now we can see what it looks like here. You can see all the individual words that we haven't used and the words that we have used, okay? So let's go through this list of words and see what ones could stand out and go into my features list. Let's see, so we could go waterproof, protect your, I can see carpet and rug, check your carpet and rugs. Let's see, if we look down here, we've got incontinence. So we could say, protect your carpet and rugs whilst puppy training from dog incontinence, something like that. Protect your carpets, your carpet, rugs, and floor. I can see the word floor from dog incontinence and whilst and during puppy training. That looks good to me. Let's see, I can see play pen, maybe something like multi-use, it could be line your, line your crate, playpen, bathroom, <laughs> what else? Okay, so you get the idea how I'm trying to take these words or phrases and putting them into this listing. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that you get this listing optimization score over on the left. This here tells you how well your listing is going. Currently it needs improvement. I haven't finished building it out, but it also tells you specifically some best practices. So you want your title between 100 to 200 characters, which we've done, minimum of five features, which I haven't completed yet. Each one we want 100 to 200 characters. And then the same, we want 1,000 to 2,000 characters in the description. 
and then 70% of the main keywords used. So what that's referring to, if I scroll down, we've got our description here. So I'm just gonna quickly put something in, washable, pee pads, dogs, perfect for puppy training, dog incontinence, protect your carpets, rugs, sofa with our reusable waterproof mats. And then the last field down here is your backend search terms, okay? So here I wanna paste in a lot of my top keywords. So I could come up here to my words, copy them, and paste them in. All right, you can already see that my listing optimization score is bumped up. I still need to finish some of my features and build out my description and even my backend search terms, okay? Or actually remove some from my backend search terms. So you can see, or you get the idea here of how to build out a listing. Now, I've been doing this demonstration purely from kind of an SEO perspective, trying to utilize these top keywords. You do also have to remember that real people are gonna be reading this listing and you do need to make it compelling and focus on uh, things that will help people buy your product. So if I forget about the keywords for a second, what are the things that are gonna help me sell these pee pads? Again, uh, I think the fact that they're waterproof is a good one because people are always wanting to protect you know, they're different things. The fact that it can go into crates, it can go on the floor, the fact that it is sort of multi-use, I don't know if multi-use is the right word, but that I think is another selling factor. Just the fact that it's reusable, I think is a selling point versus the disposable puppy pads that a lot of people use. So you wanna be thinking about what are your unique selling points, okay? And if you've found a way to differentiate your product from the competition, maybe you've bundled in something extra or you've offered a size that everyone asks for but uh, doesn't exist, make sure that that is, you know, uh, first and foremost in your list of features, okay? Once you've completed building out your listing, you can come down here to preview to get an idea of what it's going to look like. Following that, you can come up here and save as. So I'm gonna save mine as a draft. I started this one from scratch, but remember if I selected that earlier option of optimizing an existing listing, then I could actually pull in my listing from Amazon, update it here in the creator. And then when I was finished, you can then actually click sync to Amazon and then this will send it back to Seller Central and publish the changes there. If you've created a brand new listing like I have here and you don't have the option to sync it back to Amazon, then you just simply copy each of these fields and then paste it into Seller Central into your listing. Now the other element of your listing that we haven't talked about is enhanced brand content or also known as A plus content. For that, you do need to go inside of Seller Central to set up, and you do also need to be brand registered. If you're not brand registered, you won't have access to this particular feature, but once you are, it's a really great one to take advantage of. To get there, go to Advertising, A Plus Content Manager. I'll show you one of our existing ones as an example. So I'm gonna go into the Jungle Snugs Gray. So as you can see, A Plus Content gives you a whole bunch of different layouts that include images and text. Creating this content is pretty straightforward. You can come in here, edit, select images that you like. You can then move these boxes up and down so that you can position it how you like. You can come in, add in text. You can then do things like apply bold, underline, that type of thing. If we come down, we've got different types of layouts. So this particular layout has an image with some overlay text. It's got a little title and then some subtext that you can put there. And then you've got this layout that has an image on the left with text on the right. And then vice versa, this is the opposite. 
So you can select all these different layouts and then mix and match all these boxes. Really, you can just be super creative here and just experiment and see what works best for your particular listing. What's really nice is that you can see how it looks on desktop, but then I can also see what it looks like on mobile. And this is really important because a lot of shoppers are shopping on their smartphones. So you do need to understand what it looks like on mobile and make sure that the text, if there's text on the images is big enough to be able to read on a small screen and just to make sure that the layout looks nice on a mobile phone because this displays quite prominently towards the top of the listing on a mobile device. If I come to start creating A plus content, I'm gonna to come to enhanced product description and here's what the different modules look like. Okay, so I've got a blank canvas here. You've seen what uh, one that's already made looks like, but if we're going to a brand new one, we can select a company logo. That was like the jungle slider one that we saw. We can create a comparison chart. You can see all the different layouts here that again, you can mix and match these, move the order and all sorts of different things. Once you've created your layout, you can then add in the ASINs that you want it to apply to. Then you submit it for approval from Amazon, which could take anywhere from a couple of days up to a week for them to approve and it finally becomes live on your listing. So those are a few ways that you can not only create your listing, but then optimize it with highly relevant keywords and then build out your listing using enhanced brand content if you've got access to brand registry. As I mentioned earlier on, this is one of the things that you can do whilst your product is being shipped from the factory over to the US as you've got a whole bunch of time and that can be a lot of great time to be doing this keyword research and building out your listing. It's well worth putting the time in at this particular stage. Now, if we take a break for a second, let's talk about some ways that you can get inspiration for your listing, okay? So we're over on Amazon and I'm gonna type in my keyword, washable pee pads for dogs. And I'm just gonna check out some other listings, okay? To get an idea of the kind of language that people are already using in their listings, see what things I like and don't like. So I'm going to come down here. Maybe I'll ignore the sponsored ones look at some of these higher ranking ones. So this looks like a, a fairly new one. This is uh, one that I've definitely seen for a little while. So I'm gonna take a look at this guy. Okay, so what are they calling out? You'll see that they're calling out that they're waterproof training pads and that they're reusable. They're including whelping pads because as we saw that keyword came up a lot. So those are all good things. The bullet points they're using here, they're focusing on the absorption and odor control. The fact that there are so many uses, like I mentioned, one convenient pad, I like that. What's this one? One, two, punch value. Uh, it's calling out the fact that you're, okay, you're gonna save a lot of money by buying this one pad versus lots of disposable ones. I was trying to think of something along those lines as well. Modern, neutral, natural colors to blend in with the rest of your house. Okay, let's see. Tested and crafted to last. They're saying it's just high quality. A lot of technical terms here to say that it's really strong. Okay, so it's always interesting to check out some of your competitors or the, the higher ranking products to see what they're calling out in their listing to, to give you some ideas. They've got enhanced brand content here, crate liner, protecting furniture, whelping pads, incontinence, post-surgery pad. That's another use case that I hadn't thought of. They can go under bowls, so feeding mats. That's definitely another good one, under litter boxes and more. Oh, this is an interesting use of enhanced brand content. They're actually putting a testimonial in here. So perfect for elderly dogs. So there, the use case here is it was used for a dog with incontinence is what I'm assuming. That's pretty cool. And then the features that they're pulling out here, that it's washable, high quality, no slip grip. That's another one. So 
Uh, I think that would probably be one that would be important to customers is that it's grippy and doesn't slide around. So I like that. All right, so even just looking at one listing here, it's given me a few things to think about. Now, if I were to go back and spend some more time on my listing, I'll think about what's most important to me in calling out on that page. The other important part of optimizing your listing and helping it get clicked on and discovered on search pages is your product images. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the next episode. Now, remember, if you're following along and wanting to build your own Amazon business, then I'd recommend you join the Million Dollar Case Study Challenge. The first steps are joining our private Facebook group. Each week, you receive action items so that you can follow along and be building your own business. The link is in the description. Also visit Jungle Scout if you'd like to see how our leading all-in-one platform can help you sell on Amazon. We have an array of tools from helping you find a product all the way to managing your business. For instance, try out Keyword Scout and Listing Builder that I showed you today. If you'd like to see Jungle Scout in action, then check out the link in the description for a free live demo. In the next episode of the Million Dollar Case Study, we get creative and cover all things photography for your Amazon product. Discover what you need to know about images on your listing and how they can help you stand out from the competition. It's gonna be a fun episode. Make sure you tune in. I'll see you then. Oh, barcode stuff. I hate barcode stuff. Ah, to get one, go to GS1. Uh, cut.